today we're going to look into the Predator Concrete Jungle Stoneheart Predator action figure by NECA. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more videos. And follow us on Instagram for more action figures and toy photography. Stoneheart Predator Stoneheart was once an honorable warrior, then he was captured by Borgia Industries and subjected to a series of brutal augmentations that would see the towering predator brainwashed and turned into a cyborg. As his first combat test, he would be dispatched to end the revenge-fueled rampage of his former clan brother, Scarface. Before his conversion into a mind-controlled cyborg, Stoneheart was the enforcer and pack leader of the Dark Blade clan, renowned for his size and brutality. He shunned ranged weaponries, preferring to take on his prey literally hand-to-hand, -hand, foregoing even the traditional wrist blades in favor of hand-mounted daggers. His name was earned from his practice of gruesomely dismantling his prey, including a member of a rival clan who challenged his honor and accused him of using widely reviled genetic augmentation to gain his fearsome size. Alongside his fellow unwilling badbloods, Longspear and Swiftknife, Stoneheart would meet his fate at the hands of the redeemed Scarface, who fought the giant and finally delivered to him an honorable death. So out of the packaging, you could see that he comes with very minimal accessories. You have Stoneheart himself, his set of extra hands or fists, open mandibles, and two pairs of giant wrist blades. Stoneheart Predator is based from the video game Predator Concrete Jungle, which I think NECA did a really phenomenal job paying tribute to this Predator. In my opinion, I would honestly say that it's way better than the actual game release and concept art itself. They really hit one out of the park with this release. The details on this figure is insane, which we'll go over in a few. But for now, let's take a look at his size and height. Stoneheart is a huge predator, standing at a whopping 11 inches tall, similar to Assassin Predator from 2018's film The Predator, which is roughly close to a 1-6 scale figure. Now in comparison to his fellow Yaucha, you could see that he towers over them. Here I've used the classic Ultimate Jungle Hunter Predator, which he stands at about 8 inches tall. Now I don't have Scarface Predator available for comparison. He's one of the only NECA Predators I've missed out on. Moving on, let's take a look at his head details. So one of the keynotes on him is they actually cut off his dreads, which actually fits perfectly, since he's a cybernetic experiment, and it gives him that very unique look. And alongside that, he's got four LEDs, or cybernetic neon lights, you could actually turn the lights on by pulling the top of his head and switching them on, which we'll get to a little later. Another unique feature for Stoneheart is he doesn't have the traditional head swap. Instead, you can replace his mandibles from close to open by easily popping them off. Additionally, you can also open and close his jaws. The paint application inside his mouth is also very well detailed. Initially, I was expecting his torso sculpt to be a clone of Assassin's Predators. But to my surprise, NECA actually made an all-new sculpt for this figure. Like, you can see some mutation and flesh morphing onto the chest and back straps, as well as the chest area with the cybernetic heart. The sculpting on this figure is done so well. I absolutely love how much detail and defined his muscles are. Plus, you can see a lot of heavy skin stretching and textures. Especially these deeper skin mutation and in the middle of his chest. Naka did a fantastic job with his paint application. I love these added red tones for the fleshy area. It really made the straps look like it's attached and coming out of his chest. Unlike the original video game version, he was entirely in the color of teal with no exposed red inner muscle tone. These straps that are coming out of his chest are connected to his cybernetic generator, which are attached to his back. They include a pair of these power turbines and some hose attachments right below that. The bottom hose attachment is connected to his belt strap, 
and the top hose is connected to his elbow. I think these hoses are perfectly placed and fitted with each other, and they don't seem to go in each other's way, and they are nicely textured and really durable. The back strap is also the same material of soft plastic. Now I think a really nice addition would be some LEDs on his turbines, just like how he had it on the video game. But I think the blue paint app is still pretty nice nonetheless. Back with more details, I really love these red tones on his flesh, as if he's mutating onto the generator, as well as his heavily textured back with scales on the skin. Same goes right below that. In my personal opinion, another nice addition would be a wired LED that runs across his belt section. But all these small details are still nice nonetheless. For the front area of his loincloth, they used a metallic sculpt with a black and bronze finish and silver highlights. And at the back area, they used the traditional leather flap, which is nicely textured and it separates from the metallic area. His thigh area are also well defined and heavily textured. I love how they exaggerated on the bumps and scales. On top of that, his muscles are well defined. The pain apps on his thigh are also detailed like these red vein or scars. Same goes to the back area of his thigh. Now in the shin guards, they sculpted the metallic area really smooth without the traditional wear and damage. His knees also include that supposed neon lights. The paint application also has the same of black and bronze with some gunmetal gray. And we have some more gunmetal gray back here on the trims. Now for his gauntlets, they also come with these supposed neon lights. And another one of his features are these bear claws, which he uses to manhandle other predators or anyone that gets in his way. And the same goes with the other arm. The paint apps used for his gauntlets are the same of black and bronze and gunmetal gray on the smaller sections. So right below the box, NECA provided some instructions on how to turn his LEDs on and how to properly replace the batteries. To turn his LEDs on, you just need to pop the top of his head off like Frankenstein and when you first open him up, he comes with this plastic tab, which you need to pull out. Then flick the switch on, and you're good to go. His LEDs are impressively bright. My demonstration wouldn't even do justice on how bright they are. For articulation, you can turn his head right and left, or turn them all the way around 360 degrees. You can also move it slightly up and down. Mine came a bit loose. And for his shoulder, you can swivel it up, and the hose goes along with it. The only limitation is, when you move his arm all the way around, his hose will stop the arm from reaching all the way back. So putting his arm back in place, you can just tuck this hose back in here. Back to his shoulder area, you could also lift him up sideways. And it stops about right here. As you can see, his elbow comes with double joints and you can extend them out as far as this. Which is pretty good in terms of realism. For his wrists, you can pivot them all the way around and swivel it down or up. Same goes for the gauntlets. You can twist them all the way around. Now for his torso, 
they've used this ab cruncher articulation so you can move them around in a circular motion and side to side. And pretty much the same goes on its back. Now with its legs, they've used these nice ratcheted joints which he can do a split all the way up. Unlike the traditional NECA predators, their legs are very limited to the ball joints and their loincloth. You can also bend his thigh forward. And backward to this limitation. His knees also come with double joints. Where you can smoothly bend them backwards up to here. And lastly, down to his feet. His ankles also came with ratcheted joints and ball joints. You can easily circle his foot all the way around, but I would highly suggest to warm him up before doing so. So in my overall thought, if you're a huge Predator fan, like myself, this is definitely a must-have figure. The articulation and details on this figure are superior. The price tag on this figure is $60, which is not bad considering his size and build. You can pick these up at Entertainment Earth, provided in my description below. Please let us know what your thoughts are in the comments below, or for any future suggestions. Thank you for watching, please subscribe and I'll catch you on the next episode.